Hi guys, welcome to the shop. My name is Dustin Apple, and this is Bloodline Bowfishing TV. You know, I'm kind of a gear junkie. I love bows, and since I love bows and I love bow fishing, I get asked a lot, you know, what's it take to shoot a carp? I want to get into bow fishing. I've, I've been looking, I've, you know, I want to try to buy something, but I just don't know what to buy. Well, we're going to get into that today and discuss what it takes to shoot a carp. Um, whether you have been bow hunting for a long time and you want to get into bow fishing or maybe you want to get your kids started in bow fishing. You know, if you're starting a youngster out in bow fishing, kinetic energy is a big, big point to look at. And so I thought I would dig in the house, get all my bows out, start looking at them, start shooting them, and uh, you know, just kind of enjoy the day. We've had six or eight inches of rain, so the bow fishing isn't the greatest. But uh, it's a pretty day. We're going to shoot some bows and enjoy the day. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so these two arrows are pretty much, pretty much the same. They're about 20 grains difference. Um, this arrow here is 1,461 grains, and this one's 1,440. So, you know, that's pretty close. There is a, a slight variation. Um, I don't know whether it's the density of these fiberglass arrows. Um, I've always used a full length arrow with a, 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 a plastic knock. And of course, I always use muzzy bow fishing points. But uh, there could be, you know, as much as 200 grains, anywhere from 1300 to 1500 grains is what a standard white shaft is going to weigh but there could be a, you know a fair amount of variance in the projectile that you have but for today's test we're going to be using these two arrows which like i said 1460 grains um, all my bows are set between 35 and a half and 36 pounds okay for this test I'm going to be shooting all the bows, except for a few bows that my wife Amy is going to shoot. My specific draw length is 27 and a half inches shooting fingers. Okay, my wife's a little shorter; she's going to be shooting about 24 inches. But we can show you the difference in kinetic energy that each bow is able to produce at those draw lengths. Okay, guys, before we get started. I want to discuss one very important thing and I get asked this a lot. What about a small bow and finger pinch? Finger pinch is when you've got a short axle to axle bow and the string is at a high angle and wants to pinch your fingers. Okay, I understand where you guys are coming from, however if you tweak your style just slightly you'll never experience finger pinch. Now. How I prefer to do it. My deer hunting bow is at 28 and a half inches, but as I've already told you, I prefer to shoot my bow fishing setup at 27 and a half. Now, what's this do? By shortening up the draw length of my bow an inch, which this one's actually set up a little shorter, um, my anchor point is closer up on my face, and as I release the bow, I still have plenty of elbow movement to where I can pull the bow apart upon release and the tips of my fingers will roll off the string versus me just trying to release the string. When you go to draw and you release the string, chances are you're telling your left hand to react at the same time. If you draw the bow and you try to pull it apart as you release the string, you'll have a much higher consistency shot. So if you guys are experiencing finger pinch, that's a good way to do it. Try to take just uh, an inch off your draw length and see if that doesn't help you. As well as, you know, grabbing the string with fingertips versus, you know, grabbing it a knuckle deep. I'm busting Knox, first shot. 96 and 95. Yep. 
far. Ninety-seven. One oh seven. One oh eight. One oh eight. One oh nine. One oh two. One oh six and one oh eight. One oh seven. One oh five. One oh seven. Custom bows are awesome. I absolutely love them and I'll never turn one down if somebody wants to build me one. It's the shootability. It's the the weight, the size, the grip, the all the little things that can make a bow just marry to your hand and feel right. That's what a custom bow is. A bow is what you make it, folks. Make it fit you as a shooter. Draw cycles, draw weights, and draw lengths are very, very important. If a bow doesn't fit you, then you're never going to be happy with it. Okay, so we've run our numbers, and you know, there's a handful of guys have been talking this spring and summer about getting their kids into bow fishing. It's very difficult to do because I know you as a parent want them out there with you and you know how much they're going to enjoy it. But, you know, kids five, six, seven years old tend to not, you know, be able to pull enough poundage for their drawing. And I've got a bow set up here for a borderline, what I would consider a borderline arrow, okay? I've turned this bow down to 18 pounds. All right, and I have shortened it to an 18 inch draw. All right. Sixty-two feet per second. Sixty-three 
60 feet per second. If a fish is really close and you use a sharp, sharp point and you pinch the barbs down, I mean, that's going to be really close. You may get those barbs in the flesh, you may not. You really need an arrow flying about 75 feet per second to get your kinetic energy up around 15 foot pounds. You know, close to it. Would prefer 20 foot pounds. If you can get arrow speeds up to 80 feet per second, now don't cut an arrow down. Um, you lose kinetic energy by decreasing the projectile weight. Always shoot a full length arrow when you're introducing your kids into bow fishing. But no matter their draw length or draw weight, if you can get the speed of the bow or the speed of a 1500 grain arrow above, say, 75 feet per second, then you should be good to go. Well, guys, so what did we learn here today? Hopefully, you can see these numbers and, and you know. We plugged in on an archery calculator and figured up our kinetic energy. And as you very well know, since we used the same projectile, speed equaled kinetic energy force. Um, there's not a lot of difference from 29.6 to 37.8 was the big winner. And that was our PSE wave. Um, you know, but there's got to be a breaking point to everyone, right? So I went ahead and put the thousand dollars or more line on there, um, including Amy's hawk because we built that hawk. Um, it wasn't an original hawk when we bought it. So uh, the American Eagles, a G Rex, and her hawk made the thousand dollar or more line, and you know those bows were just right up there even with the performance of everything that we shot today. One thing I can't express over these videos is the way a bow feels in your hand. There's no replacement for a custom bow. There just absolutely cannot be done. On the other side though, on entry level bows or bows that aren't going to cost you very much to purchase, um, I wish I had more of them. Um, you know, some, some 70s wheel bows and, and things of that nature to throw up here and to show you that a $100, $50 Craigslist bow is plenty of bow to be able to go out and shoot fish. Um, one of our, you know, best performers was again that little Bear Odyssey 2. It was a great little bow. Um, I think I bought that on eBay for like 115 bucks, and I've been shooting the crap out of it for three or four years but I mean 107.8 feet per second average out of 36 pounds is just pretty amazing for that little intermediate or youth bow um, another big impressive bow that continues to amaze me and everything that I've, I've seen thrown at it it always succeeds is the Muzzy Addict you wouldn't think that a low-end recurve, you know, that's uh, marketed towards bow fishing, would be such such a high-quality item. But I've shot that muzzy at it quite a bit, and it just continues to amaze. It feels good. You can beat the living crap out of it, and it's going to be there for you every time. And I think retail on a bare muzzy addict is like 170. So, you know, it's hard to beat a recurve, you know, especially if you're just getting into bow fishing. Um, the PSE Wave, you know, PSE has made a lot of bows for the bow fishing world. Um, a, a PSE Disco, the Mud Dog, um, some of the others, a, a, a PSE Hammerhead. All those bows were marketed for the $300 price point and have all been exceptional weapons. Um, I've not had any bad experiences 
with PSE bows um, on or off the water. But uh, in the Oneida family, Oneidas are an exceptional, exceptional bow fishing weapon. And they are tunable. That's what makes them so great for each and every shooter is that with a few turns of a screw, swapping out modules, um, and the ability to accessorize an Oneida, that's what makes an Oneida so great. The, the ability to not only change your draw length and draw weight, but to change the draw cycle as well. I prefer a bow that loads up. I don't like any let off, uh, but I know a lot of guys that I shoot with prefer an 80% let off bow. They come to full draw every single time. It's just not my style, but you know, we can shoot the same bow, just shoot it completely different. So I hope this has uh, shed a little bit of light on some of the bow fishing bows that are out there. And, you know, as far as minimal kinetic energy, what it takes to shoot a fish, it's hard to say. Every water is different, every shooter is different. If I'm introducing a kid into archery and, you know, we're gonna be shooting fish that are up on top of the water, you know, hopefully I can get an arrow flowing from his bow in excess of 75 to 80 feet per second. Um, if not, I'm not for sure if those barbs will be able to go in all the way or not. Um, and that's just kind of heartbreaking for everyone. So guys, as always, keep it safe. Don't forget them personal flotation devices. And we'll see you next time right here on Bloodline Bowfishing TV.